Kylian Mbappe, the new king of Spain, the new king of Barcelona. If today is something to go by, Barcelona fans would be really, really, really worried and Real Madrid fans would be really happy. The long-awaited revenge, PSG putting all their past traumas to bed, the 6-1, the comeback, the last-minute winner conceding at Camp Nou. Everything is put to bed now and Kylian Mbappe is the new king and he's finally led PSG on his own to a semi-finals. It happened before, but this is the first time it has happened all by Kylian Mbappe himself and he's in the semi-finals. Both their presidents, Laporta and Khalifi, were in the stadium, were watching their teams battle it out. And coming into the game, Barcelona were clear favourites. They were one goal up, uh, having one from away from home. And uh, they actually took the lead. And the first goal, Rafinha, some would say it was lucky. I think it was lucky, but it was also like there was some intention behind it. So they took that lead. There were two goals up in the tie and it felt like they were cruising. PSG had little answers. But then a moment of madness, pure, pure madness by Arojo. I think it, it was nailed on. I think he, he was a soft foul, but he was a last man. And the referee got it spot on. It was a big decision. It was a huge decision because if he blew the whistle, he had to give the red card. There's no other way about it. And and he did it. He sent him off, free kick, and Barcelona were down to 10 men. And Xavi took the, their most prolific uh, player, uh, Lamal, off. Uh, it was it was a hard, hard day for uh, at office for Barcelona defenders. I think they had a poor game. Uh, Jules Kunde was skinned all night. Cancelo considered a stupid penalty. Araujo got, got sent off, so it was not a great night for, for Barcelona defenders. And then the, the demons of the past, the man they paid more than £100 million for, who was barely ever fit for them. Ever. Like, he was never fit for them. He never could get a thing of five games together. Uh, they carried him, they loved him, and in the end, they discarded him. And he came back to score the first goal uh, for PSG. And, I mean, that's that's just written, written in stars. Uh, the scriptwriters had like a, a ball today. Like they 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 wrote the script in a way where it, like they just couldn't go wrong with anything. And then a Wolves loanee, like Vitinho, if you guys don't remember, Vitinho was at Wolves on loan and he didn't get a chance. He didn't even get a sniff in. But then he had like a sledgehammer from out of the box and he scored. And uh Ter Stegen just couldn't get anywhere anywhere near it. And that was 2-1. And at that point. Uh, Luis Enrique just put everyone behind the ball. They were pressing so high. They were all over Barcelona. They could smell blood. And they actually hunted. They were the sharks in the ocean. They actually hunted them down. Uh, and then a brainless moment. I, I don't know what Cancelo was doing. I think sometimes when these great managers like Pep Guardiola, they they let players go, there's a reason behind it. Like he won titles with Zinchenko and Cancelo. And now, if you look at them, they've been a liabilities for their team. I mean, Cancelo has been good, but then this was the moment to prove that he's actually the same level that he was before. He, that was the the player was going away from the ball, and he had no business tackling him. He was no danger at all, and then he just jumped and he lunged into his foot. So, I think clear penalty again, another correct decision. And uh, the main man stepped up. He stepped up. He scored the goal. Uh, and he celebrated. He celebrated <laughs> celebrated as if he was playing for Real Madrid in that white jersey. Funnily enough, PSG were playing in white jersey. So it was, yeah, it was one of those games where, you know, it was beautiful to watch. Uh, also, you could you feel a little bit sorry about Xavi, uh, given he's now his announces departure from, from Barcelona and he probably won't be here next season. But he got sent off. And he was so frustrated. He was so mad. I think part of the frustration was not from the referees, but from his players because they were so poor. They, they were just not in the game after the red card. And even the red card, right? It was their own doing. And he kicked the the US UCL something that was there, some banner or something. And then the referee just sent him off. And then finally, Mbappe with every great player. The ball chases them. Somehow, I don't know how it happens. They miss, but the ball chases them. Uh, I don't know which, what, who it was, but like somebody played the pass to Mbappe. He was running, he was free. There were two players coming, Barcelona defenders coming close to him. He shot, it got saved. It was a rebound that was saved. It was another shot that was saved. And then it finally fell to Mbappe who wouldn't, who wouldn't miss uh, the second time of asking. So all in all, a great, great, great result for PSG. Great way to bury all the previous results and previous disappointments. And uh, I want to say a quick word about Luis Enrique. I mean, 
we easily forget that he won a Champions League with Barcelona. It was the famous time of MSN where Messi, Suarez and Neymar were balling out in La Liga and they won a championship and he was a really successful manager for them. And then he kind of is not rated that much all around the world maybe because he had th- that trio to play in in Barcelona but he's a great manager and uh, before the match he also said that you know I'm not I don't feel the pressure P- people who work 9 to 6 they have to work go wake up they feel pressure I love my job and today he showed as soon as Barcelona went down 10 men he were he was on to it his tactics were spot on his subs were spot on and he finally got one better on their team so i think he 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 had a great game the only downside and i fear for psg about this player is donnarumma i don't know he was highly rated i think he's still young he's still very young for a goalkeeper but he was highly rated he went on a free to psg but some of his performance and overall game is really poor um there was this one time where he saved but that save was right in the middle of the goal and if, if there wasn't a psg defender that was a tap in and that would be 2-2 barcelona and then they were right back in it uh there was another time when he just came and he just clattered into lewandowski and that was absolutely unwanted luckily lewandowski was offside so it it wasn't a penalty but i'm sure if it he wasn't offside they would have gone to we are and they would have given a penalty because that was a bad foul so i think his decision making his shot stopping this play out of the back which we saw in the first leg is really poor and he's someone that that uh, other teams oppositions who they face in the next rounds would would definitely target and their opponents the second match the second leg of the second quarter finals dortmund versus atletico banger there's something about this this year's champions league right whoever said this year's champions league fell off clearly is out of his mind uh, best of the teams playing football against each other the scrapping of away away goal has really helped uh you know unleash teams their their attacking prowess and they have really showed like aggregate score 5-4 was for Dortmund and 6-4 for PS so i think this is a beautiful uh, champions league quarter finals and the semi finals are set it's going to be PSG versus Dortmund and man Diego Simeone how can a man take so much pain right uh, he's one of my favorite coaches i think he's he's he suffered a lot in his uh, in his career his style of play is not the most uh eye catchy or it's not the most entertaining but he's he's actually dealt with Barcelona and Real Madrid and I really wanted him to go through but you can't really fault Dortmund and uh, they have again proven that the yellow wall is infallible at the Signaduna Park and it's one of those classic shows where they scored four past a very resolute and very steadfast defense and uh, yeah they 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 totally deserve going through and a lot of people now have psg as their favorites i don't think so i don't think so i think it's 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 even seasons a dortmund would be tough to beat at their home and psg do have um uh, some chinks in their armor so let us know what do you think about the decisions made in today's game the goals or uh, anything that you want to talk about and do let us know who do you think would win this semi final between psg and dortmund until next time